afternoon, everyone. Good morning. All tied up. No, no. <laughs> Casual to choose this. Can I just first of all say that um, today we're focusing again on, on, on mortgage rates this week with our private members' motion. Uh, as you know, going back to 2011, we have seen this as the major, one of the major economic and social issues facing the country. In many ways, it's created a degree of economic paralysis insofar as uh, we have thousands and thousands of people locked in mortgage arrears without any sustainable uh, solutions being offered. And as a result, consumer spending uh, has taken a huge hit. Uh, and there's just a lack of confidence uh, across that entire sector. Now, targets have been set which are not being met in terms of the number of sustainable solutions uh, that should be offered to, to people in mortgage arrears. The numbers in arrears over 90 days, up to 54,000 now, growing on a continuing basis. Uh, we know that options have been put before uh, the banks in terms of offering split mortgages, but the numbers that have been offered um, really is pitiful. Uh, and we're very concerned about the direction the government is taking. Uh, the government uh, has given more powers uh, and greater control to the banks uh, in relation to mortgage arrears. Uh, and we're very fearful for borrowers and people who are in this situation, uh, given the sense that we have that a more hardline approach has been taken, that the repossessions will be ramped up for the latter half uh, of the year. We're already, the Rockless members are getting um, uh, evidence of uh, an increased hardline approach, people have been told they should sell their houses um, and, and, and so forth. So the dilution of the code of conduct, uh, the passing of legislation which gives powers to the banks to repossess without any conditionality are retrograde steps uh, and we believe that uh, as we laid out, as Michael and his team laid out over a year ago, there should be considerable independent oversight. And I want to ask Michael to come in and talk about the details of the private member's motion that we're putting yeah. before the House today. Okay, thank you very much Michal and uh, good morning everyone. I think uh, the Leader has put the, the motion really in context uh, for all of you. What we're seeking to do tonight and tomorrow night uh, is to very much put the spotlight on the revised code of conduct uh, on mortgage arrears and also the approach of this government uh, to the mortgage arrears crisis. Um, in recent times the government has given more and more powers to the banks uh, without any firm commitments being sought or received in return. In essence our view now is that the banks uh, have all the powers that they have been seeking uh, from government and taken together the revised code of conduct in mortgage arrears and the mortgage arrears resolution targets essentially represent now a charter uh, for family home repossessions. Uh, a repossession of the family home in our view is no longer now being seen uh, as the last resort. It is in fact uh, the solution of choice uh, for the banks in many many cases at the present time and we see the government's approach as being entirely complicit with this outcome, uh, the repossession of a growing number of family homes uh, which now looks inevitable. Certainly on the ground what we are picking up is that the banks uh, have become more and more aggressive. Uh, I think they have been emboldened by the, the additional powers and the support that they have got from the central bank uh, and indeed from the government. And when you look at the substance of what has been proposed, uh, what they are required to do is to offer uh, so-called sustainable solutions. But of course it is the banks uh, who decide what a sustainable solution is. Uh, and also that sustainable solution can be uh, another temporary solution. Uh, it can actually be uh, securing the repossession of the property or it can actually be putting a borrower into insolvency. So that is what this government regards uh, as being a sustainable solution for many people, insolvency and family home repossessions. And the reality now is when you look at the numbers, there are about 70,000 family homes uh, where the banks have been given a carte blanche to go ahead 